Welcome to the greenhouse, or I guess what's left of it, it's missing a bit of plastic. Um, so last week, uh, one of the things that really made an impression on me is just how much bigger Clippers is than Am Amara Farm. And despite that, the things that I'm doing on the farm haven't really changed all that much. I'm still doing lots and lots of weeding, I'm still planting, I'm still harvesting, um, still doing most of it by hand, um, and we're even tearing out arugula. And I'm looking at you, Martin. Yes, I found Martin's arugula on Clippers Organics. Um, but the difference between ripping out arugula here and on Amara Farm is, uh, well, scale. Here we use a tractor because it's just way too much arugula to rip out by hand. But you know what's even better than a tractor? Chickens! So here I am in this uh, greenhouse, and the arugula is this white flower that's all gone to seed. And um, they've just fenced it off and uh, connected it to the chicken coop, and the chickens are in here having a, having a blast. Chickens are really good lawnmowers, so, you know, give it a few days and all this will be mowed down to bare earth like it is on the other side there. So I've been working almost daily on the farm for about two and a half months now, and I've realized for the first time in my life, I want to be strong. And I mean physically strong. That's something I've never wanted before. It's not something I've ever cared about. Um, you know, I'm a bit of an intellectual. Uh, growing up as a boy, I never cared about being stronger than all the other boys, and I hated all the machismo. I still hate all the machismo. But I've realized on the farm, it's not about being stronger than everyone else. It's about being capable and being stronger makes me more capable so I've been working every day and I've noticed my body has gotten stronger I've gotten tougher and I can do more things and that feels really good and so I guess I've discovered something that matters to me it's never mattered to me before and now it does on Wednesday, I tagged along with Braden here on a delivery trip, uh, dropping off uh, food to people in the Okanagan. And on the trip, I kind of realized something that's been coming to me basically ever since I got here to Clippers, which is that the hardest part of farming, it's not dealing with weather, it's not dealing with weeds or predators, it's not getting it all off the fields. Honestly, I think the hardest part of farming is just getting food to the people that want to eat it getting food from point A to point B. I know it sounds really mundane, but it's a really hard problem. And it made me realize why we have things like supermarkets and giant food distributors. Um, so let me explain. Um, we did six drop-offs on this delivery trip, and it took us about four hours. And I've mentioned that, you know, Clippers is pretty big, and I figure, let's say they supply a thousand people a week with food. Well, run the math there. If they're delivering a thousand people with food and our six deliveries took four hours, that would take 666 hours to personally deliver all that food. I mean, there aren't enough hours in the week, so obviously that's not what they do. But what do they do? Well, for the last 20 years, Kevin and Anna Marie have made the four hour drive into Vancouver every single weekend. Every single weekend, they have done that four-hour drive. And they sell at farmer's markets. And that has enabled them to have a personal relationship with almost everyone that eats their food. Um, and that's really impressed me. That's kind of unique for farmers. Um, not every farmer has that degree of connection. I mean, that's what the local food movement and farmer's markets are all about. But this delivery trip really made me realize why that's not the case. Because once you hit a certain scale, trying to know all your customers, trying to give them all their food, trying to give them all time, it's just, I mean, it doesn't scale. And so we get these institutions like supermarkets and food distribution. They're necessary parts of our food system. And if we want to keep the ideals around local food, somehow we have to solve that problem. And that's a hard problem to solve. Anyway, now that I've brought that idea to the forefront. Maybe you can think about that uh, over the next week and give me some thoughts about how we can scale up local food without 
without losing that connection, without making the mistakes that we've made with large scale production. Until then, if you want to keep watching these videos, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel or you can watch our, our back catalog. Um, you can learn more about the movie that I'm making, where hopefully I'll talk about uh, this issue of food distribution um, by visiting thehandsthatfeedus.ca, and you can sign up for a newsletter there. Or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and uh, till next week.